All right, speed round question. Better Star Trek episode with the word honor. Matter of honor or code of honor? I've been assigned to serve this ship and to obey your orders. Commander Riker joins the Klingons and is faced with a deadly decision. I intend to attack the Enterprise and destroy it. He must battle his own crew to survive. I order you to lower your shields and surrender. Prepare to attack! On Star Trek, the next generation. This episode starts out with what we thought was the return of one of our favorite guest characters from the first season of Mordok. Mordok, what are you doing here? You couldn't have graduated the Academy already. I am not Mordok. I am Mendon. It's played by the same dude. Nice, okay. John Putch. Putch, whatever, however it's pronounced. But yeah, same dude. So I guess anytime they use this species, it's going to be John Putch. <laughs> hey, he's got a job. You know, so hell yeah. I think overall in the episode, we'll get into it, but separating Mendon from Mordok, definitely two separate characters. Oh yeah, they both completely act different. Mordok was more like, oh, you know, he, uh, he was having trouble figuring stuff out at the Academy, so Wesley helped him out. And this guy is super by the book, but like his book from that his species does... And like how he doesn't adjust well to the Enterprise at first, but but meanwhile, our boy, we've been asking for it for a while. This entire season, is Jonathan Frakes going to do something <laughs> besides stand there? And boy, does he! I don't recall hearing of a Federation officer ever serving on a Klingon vessel. Oh no, neither have I. I said I wouldn't mind the assignment, sir. We manifested this. <laughs> we did this, and oh my God, I loved it. I'll inform Starbase of your acceptance. They're just standing like in a circle, just shooting. It was like laser tag, basically. I'm like, that's a neat little idea. Yes, I'm like, there's probably so many things that these crew members do when it's like they're not on the bridge at work. Or it's like this is their downtime or their training time. But seeing these two do it and having a casual conversation while also expanding uh, the lore or what, what they do for training but also having this conversation about commanders or officers exchange. It's like an exchange program. Yeah, yeah. Further establishing, you know, we're still cool with the Klingons and having a little more character development for Riker. It's like, oh, I want to do it uh, with the Klingons. And I think he asked, like, why? Because like, no one's ever done it. It's like, ooh, yeah, there's the young giddy, you know, soon-to-be captain somewhere, you know. I love it. Yeah, it's great. And you talk about the, the downtime and stuff. Like, it is true because you can't leave the Enterprise even when you're off of your shift, off duty. So you do have to have activities or, or something, leisure time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not going to be the focus of the show. But it's nice to see that once in a while. Uh, so I really liked the opening of this episode. It was great. And that's fun enough. <laughs> After seeing those two things, I, yeah, I'd be hooked. I don't need to hear about something going wrong. Sometimes it's nice when things are just going right. And, and you're excited for what's going right. And this is one of those episodes where it takes a very long time for something to go wrong. Yeah. Like, you always had the tension there with this Riker storyline of going on the Klingon ship. You know, Worf, Picard, everyone's telling him how dangerous it is. An emergency transponder? You suspect trouble? Simply a security precaution. I want to ensure your return to this ship. Even with all that aside, it does take quite a while, I would say at least halfway, for, like, you know, the the flip to happen so but i appreciated that because i loved the uh the setup of it so while we'll get to the klingon stuff in a, in a moment but the whole b storyline with mendon basically ends up just being him on the bridge trying to be a know-it-all suck up to picard sir i am ensign mendon i just wanted to tell you how pleased i am to be aboard the enterprise making everybody annoyed and angry because of it and I thought maybe there was going to be more to it in, like, it, does he have evil intentions? Is he a spy for the Klingons? No, it didn't need any of that. Like, it's just, he's a goofy nerd who's trying to be a know-it-all on this bridge, and he tries to go to impress Picard, and he's like, we follow the chain of command. You talk to Worf. And then Worf's like, you can impress me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the little banter between Worf and uh, Mendon. That was great. Didn't mean to offend you. You didn't. Yet. But I think the whole point, I think it's a double meaning. One, to show the juxtaposition that Menden wanted to do things, you know, the way he did it on his other ship. Meanwhile, uh, Riker is in the tent forward, eating all this Klingon food, doing as much research as he can. And as soon as he's over on the Klingon ship, he's, like, doing things their way out of respect. But Menden was like, oh, well, you know, on our ship, you know, we, we make sure we have a full detailed report before re reporting anything. But also the double meaning, uh, 
he's the one who discovers the uh, what was it the, the virus bacteria the, mm-hmm. or the damage in the hull and the reason why things go wrong is because he doesn't report it like right away yeah because he waited like what a couple hours and say like, oh no you should have reported that right away so that's why things go south later on part of the reason part i do think reason, that yeah. klingon captain would have it would have gone south no matter what to an extent yeah uh but yeah because his people do a full report before saying anything mm-hmm. to be thorough but you mentioned the scene with Riker eating the klingon food in preparation in 10 forward i usually made more palatable choices well these are the more palatable choices Thank you. And as many great scenes as there are in this episode, this is one of the best ones because it's just such, it's why the show's so great. Like, it just shows the character of Riker, who we haven't gotten to learn that much about, um, diving in head first. Like, as soon as he gets this assignment and he knows he's going, like, okay, I'm going to dive in fully and like, I'm going to eat all this Klingon food because I know that I'm going to have to get used to eating this dis- to what is, for him and humans, disgusting food. You see Dr. Pulaski and Picard both grossed out by it, but Riker's just... He's just diving right in, and Jonathan Frakes is so great and charismatic in this scene. Mm. Yeah, it's a fun scene between all three of them. Like, the, just the dialogue, the little banter, and just hanging out in the 10 forward bar. Nothing needs to be happening, but it's just a nice little building block scene. Yeah, absolutely. And then Riker finally does get over to the ship, and I loved what you said right away when he gets there. You were like, like the Klingons, like, oh, we like not being able to see what we're doing, because <laughs> it's just so dark and red on the whole ship. Oh, but I, I love the design of the ship. Oh, yeah. The, the uh, This is my favorite word recently. The juxtaposition of, uh, you know, the bright, brightly colored, uh, warm feeling of the Enterprise bridge, and then you go over to the Klingon ship, it's like, oh, God. This is horrible. Commander William Riker of the Starship Enterprise. That is incorrect. Yeah, I agree. I loved everything about the set for the Klingon ship, the interior of it. Just Captain Cargon and then his second officer, Clag. Both of these characters were great Klingons. And this was kind of our first exposure of not full-on rebel Klingons like we saw in Heart of Glory. Like, they're within the Klingon and starfleet you know truce and everything at least at first yeah but you can tell even with these new klingons per se they have their same roots their same traditions that you know when Riker gets there he basically his initiation is that he has to beat up his second officer clag to be accepted your only concern is with how you obey my orders and that's kind of how it plays out throughout the whole episode is Riker just having to prove himself to these Klingons. I really loved it. Yeah, that scene where he beats up the one dude and he respects him afterwards. Great. And then the scene in the cafeteria was multi-layered in terms of being fantastic. Just won all the food. And he, like, you think he's prepared. And like, oh, uh, I, f- I forget what the name of the food was. Oh, we eat that one live. And then uh, like the, we see some female Klingons. I think it was Gog. Gog, yeah. Oh, he, Gog is best when served live. And <laughs> Riker's like... <laughs> and then we have the female Klingons kind of like, you know, Ian Riker up. And like, oh, maybe she'll take you. It's like, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, and I love the line where she's like, I'll, I might come back for you later. And Riker's like, is she serious? And they're like, yes. <laughs> um, but great line in that scene where he's talking to the Klingon about his father's, or both of them, he's talking about their fathers. And one of them's like, oh, my father died in battle. Like, that's the normal, honorable thing. And the other one's like pissed off because he's like, my dad escaped the Romulans. And now he lives like exiled, basically. He's like, he'll die of natural causes, like disgusted. And Riker's like, that's your dad. Like, you know, why don't you guys try to, you know, love each other, basically. We would not know how. Yesterday, I did not know how to eat gah. That is such an amazing scene. Yes, you know. Great writing. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yes, embrace culture, but also, like, Riker and Starfleet is, the you know, the shining example is that we can always move the bar forward and be better. Like, Riker will respect them, absolutely. They'll go by their ways, but also in terms of, like, the other ways, like, you don't have to die in battle, and or, or die, getting old isn't that dishonorable, per se. It's like, let's find some middle ground here, which I, which I like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And 
so then eventually it does finally get to the point where you know the other shoe drops and the klingons also find out about this bacteria virus thing that's eating their ship away but they think it was the enterprise that did it because of the scan that menden was doing yeah. and like the full comprehensive scan and even after he tells picard picard tells him like to keep doing a full scan so th they think it's because of them and then this is where they have to kind of test Riker as to where like your assignment over here is to you know follow our orders are you going to turn on the enterprise or not and probably Again, another amazing scene is when uh, he kind of tests him, like, tell us the Enterprise secrets, and Riker won't. I will not break my oath of loyalty to Starfleet. I would have labeled you a traitor and killed you where you stood. It's like, let's go! You know, yeah. it's like, oh, like that, that honor, matter of honor, you know what I mean? It's like, you're pissing me off, blah, 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 I'm going to kill the Enterprise, but I respect you for, you know, having honor. Yeah, because of course at first they think he ha he's in on it, basically. Yeah. And Clagg brings up, like, humans aren't like Klingons. He wouldn't, you know, just uh, volunteer to come over here and die as part of this. Like, they have more hesitancy about death. Even though there are a lot of humans, too, that, you know, kamikazes and other things that will, you know, die. But regardless of that, uh, great stuff. And then um, Riker convinces the captain to wait until they're within 40,000... My feet, miles, whatever kilometers, it is. Yeah, whatever, kilometers yeah. within the ship to fire because then they'll have less time to react. But in reality, it's because he knows that's the transporter range. <laughs> yes, like he is very honorable, but also it's still like a little sly Riker, you know, a little ah, gotcha, the transporter scene where they don't transport Riker, they transport the captain. Yeah, so earlier on, he talks to Worf to get ready, uh, like to prepare to go over the Klingon ship, and Worf gives him a little device and he's like set this off and basically it'll be a, a beacon mm -hmm. to show where you are and it comes into play here and Riker takes it out and uses it but then the captain's like what is that a weapon let me see it and Riker gives it to him knowing it's going to transport him instead of Riker mm -hmm. so the Enterprise they don't even know this and they transport uh, Cargon onto the Enterprise so that Riker takes control of the Klingon ship yes I relieved Captain Cargon he was acting in an irrational manner I'm your captain now Great, and like I remember when they introduced it, uh, when Worf introduced it to him. Oh, use this. Oh, sidebar. I love uh, people talk about Jordy and Data's friendship, but I think Riker and Worf's friendship is also like climbing up there as well. Yeah. Like unexpected, but it's like oh, they're kind of like friends because they've had other scenes together in previous episodes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, when they first introduced that little device where it's like oh, use this, you'll be back aboard. I'm like oh, I don't, I don't. I hope he doesn't have to use that. You know what I mean? And things are going so well on that ship. But then when uh, the other shoe dropped, it's like, oh, no, I don't want them to have to use this because I don't want it to end badly between them. Because, like, I feel like they were doing so well. And for Riker to escape like that would feel like, you know, that would suck. But I do love the twist that he get, you know, gives it to him. He tricked me! So he's gone. So now Riker becomes the acting captain of the Klingon ship and has that great scene with Picard where they're talking to each other. Like, I order you to surrender. It's like... Sure thing, Captain Riker. <laughs> and it's so great because Picard and the Enterprise had no idea about any of this, you know, that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So as soon as Riker comes on the view screen and Picard sees him and Riker starts saying to surrender, you could tell Picard immediately catches on and, like, understands what Riker is doing. And he's like, oh, of course. Like, it just plays right in so perfectly. <laughs> I think this might be, like, one of the most layered episodes plot-wise. Like, you know... All these little twists that happened in the last act made it so great, and I have really harped on so far in the Star Trek franchise space battle episodes because obviously these are older shows. Even this one still is a little bit older. The effects aren't like amazing, you know, and like if it's just a space battle episode, like it is going to be hard to get bought into. But the best best versions of those so far are the ones where the characters can make up for it, and in this one it, I think is the best example so far. I think it's the best space battle episode of Star Trek so far. Because because they set up so much with Riker and the Klingons over there that once that space battle happened, I mean, obviously, we've never seen anything like this. Like, someone from the Enterprise over on a Klingon ship, working for the Klingons, essentially, like, having to take their orders and figuring a way to, to commandeer and become captain. Like, it was just great. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Like, so much buildup. But it doesn't lead to a battle. Right. True, yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, 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 oh. But it's like, I didn't want there to be a battle. But the tension, the slow tension building, like, oh, God, you know, what's going to happen? I mean, I don't think either we're going to blow up, but still. 
Get him off my ship. He has to take back command from Riker, but because it's the Klingon way, Riker knows that he has to just stand there and let Cargon punch him in the face as he takes back command. And even Clagg says to Riker when he's helping him up, he's like, you know more about Klingons than I thought. And just a great last moment there on the Klingon ship before he beams back over. And Picard says something to him to the effect of like, oh, I guess you didn't learn how to duck. Apparently not when to duck. When not to duck would be more accurate. <laughs> yeah, I, all of that was just amazing, fantastic, just perfect resolution. Just last thing I'll say on the Klingons, I think it did a good job of showing that yes, the Klingons are part of this treaty, but the smallest thing, the smallest miscommunication, can turn the whole thing upside down. And if they had attacked the Enterprise or whatever happened, vice versa, I don't know if this one small ship, uh, you know, fight would lead to a whole break of the truce. But it could, right? Like, that's kind of how wars happen, right? Like, a small thing happens, and then a bigger thing, and a bigger, you know, and it just culminates. Yeah. So, you know, who knows what would have happened if Starfleet would have any retaliation. But it just goes to show, you know, it's we're on thin ice here. This treaty is not, we do not get along, which I love. Yeah, the Klingons haven't been nerfed, really. But it's like, we've agreed to this, but they're still like Klingons. Yeah. Uh, the Klingon episode last season, like... The Klingon captain seemed kind of, you know, like, well, this is the way things are now, a little bit. Like, that one did. But these guys showed, like, oh, no, we're still Klingons. You you fuck up once, you're done. Which I like, because they're still the same. They haven't been nerfed. Star Trek, when they need a good episode, they just open up that old reliable box and just pull out a Klingon episode. It's like... <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I haven't said this in a long time. This might be my favorite episode so far. <laughs> same, yeah, I mean... I'm trying to think of the other ones from season two that we've literally, we've literally watched in the past like couple weeks, and like, uh, and this this one is just, you know, list list top five, and, um, and I'm and I'm including season one in that as well. I mean, this is like, this was excellent. This was excellent. Welcome home. Let's see what our patrons have to say about it. I'm cat with attitude. If you like Klingons and their lore, you should like this. And for this episode, at least you can't complain that Riker hasn't had anything to do. I have it listed on my rankings as best of the best. And I'm assuming this person has seen the other, you know, five seasons that we haven't. So that's that's high praise. We may have started to get a little bit predictable because I'm just reading through these. <laughs> we got Jovette saying they'll love it. Darren saying this one ought to satisfy T.A. immensely. Uh, Dan saying, me thinks you're going to like this one. Andreas saying, my prediction, you will get a huge kick out of this episode. So uh, I think everyone uh, kind of kind of guessed that we would really love this one. Which, I mean, hey, I don't think that's fully just because we're predictable. I think it's also because the episode is great. And they know it's great. You know, just like we do. So, you know, it's a great episode. Yeah, I think the people have just watched our, uh, our building block episodes of watching Hawkeye and, <laughs> and uh, the Clone Wars, and they know <laughs> what we want. This one's from James. Riker had to beat someone up as soon as he got there, just like prison or high school. <laughs> <laughs> or high school. <laughs> Go to a new school, you got to beat someone up on your first day. From uh, Jovet. Storybook time. Commander Riker serving under Captain Cargon over Lieutenant Clagg eating Gog on board the Pog. <laughs> <laughs> this one is from Molinsky. This is it. I have been looking at the calendar and counting down for this moment. This episode has Riker, has Klingons, and also has a return of the Benzite vaping race. <laughs> LOL, this episode should check a lot of the boxes for what you guys have been asking for. Well, I'm glad you've been excited for it. Hopefully our reaction held up to what you were expecting. But yeah, it definitely did check a lot of the boxes. It sure did. Do you have any... Com I don't have any complaints, I don't think. No, I mean... Well... <laughs> <laughs> not really a complaint, because we're, we've got something that we've asked for, which is heavy focus on Riker, but only... I mean, that's with every episode. If you focus on one character, someone else is not going to be there. I mean... We, we just came off of two episodes heavily focused on, maybe not heavily focused, one maybe, but heavily focused on Brent Spiner. So him, like, barely being in these past two, because I like Brent Spiner so much, it's a minor detriment, but it's like, it's a Riker episode, finally. So it's like, I can't be that upset, and I know how this show works. I know it's a rotating circle of, you know, spotlight. You know, it's like, you ever played Donkey Kong 64? Yeah. 
you know, you jump in the barrel and like the spotlight spins around for which character you pick. Mm -hmm. Oh, pick me, pick me. You know, it's like, that's what the show is sometimes. You know what I mean? It can't always be about you. Yeah. It's funny because even when it's not like a side character episode, I just consider those Picard episodes. You know what I mean? Like there's always a character in focus, it seems like. Yeah. And it's going to have to be Picard because he's the captain. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. But yeah, but just by definition, like it wouldn't make it a side character episode because it's Picard, the captain. Right. It's just like, but I can't think of any episodes that are like not focused on an individual character, which I really like because I don't know, maybe they could come up with a plot that would like involve everyone equally, but I don't know, it'd be kind of weird. This show is really odd because Picard is the lead. Patrick Stewart is the lead, but he doesn't feel like the lead yeah you know what i mean it's like the captain's just another character you know yeah like walter white is the lead of breaking bad and every episode you f you feel like that like yeah it's it's around walter but this show it's like sometimes picard is not involved and i feel like that's weird for a tv show sometimes i mean i don't know you have your rare like last of us or whatever where uh you know the two main characters aren't even in an episode but, but then that's just, like, there are shows that do that, but it's, like, one random one-off, and then it goes back, yeah, you know? But I feel like for back then, I feel like, I don't know, we're, I'm trying to think of TV shows, but I feel like it was always heavenly around the main person. Yeah. So, balls for, like, having a good side cast and putting full faith in people like Jonathan Brakes and Brent Spiner and, like, yeah. 